Theme song. 2.0. Hello and welcome to your weekly update. This is for the week of starting the 18th of May. And what a compilation we have this week, Gabe. It's a wah wah world. Mm. This week. Yeah. We have four episodes of Wario 4, conveniently. That is good. It would have upset <laughs> me terribly if it were three or five. <laughs> Like, ah. We have 5.5 oh, wait, we episodes of Wario no, 4. Wait, fucking, we haven't beat it, so there is going to be five fucking episodes. God fucking damn it. It might be actually six, seven, depending, because we still got another, I think, three levels and plus uh, a boss, point. and then there's probably either a final world or a final boss. I can't remember exactly. Hopefully... All right, if it goes an extra two, then I'm okay. If, it, if, if it's within one, that'll, like trigger that weird bit of my brain that used to count <laughs> syllables and sentences and shit. I think you get... are fine on that. Yeah. It doesn't get much fucking play these days, but like, it's still, it's just there, you know. The dog doesn't have any f fucking teeth, but like, you know, it can still kind of like make noises. Holy shit, I forgot this existed, so I'm just obviously Googled Wario 4 you... to make yeah. some um thumbnails and shit I'm sending you a photo oh. now uh that i found and will show on the record uh that was in the manual oh. that oh. one was yeah warriors up maze Why hey you, you must be that? tired from all that reading how about taking a break try this fascinating poor cleaning face adventure well, you go in my nose and come out of my mouth. What do you say? It's free. Why is Does there a fish to... there? What's the fish got to do with anything? Is that like a bowl? Like, is he snorting a bowl of fish water? I, I assume so. Like, I... He's on Gwyneth Paltrow's new fucking remedial therapies. <laughs> fish water. Fish water. Mmm. Yeah, so the the only non warrior game you get guys get this week is today, Monday, you'll get a Streets Raids four. So that's that's cool. So I it's went to the big, doctor this it's week. It's a big yeah. Streets of Rage four though, so Yeah, it's a long one. The the war first warrior ones are long one too. I went to the doctor yeah. this this week. Oh yeah, what happened? So get a got a check up and stuff, you know. As you do, it's been quite a long time, and with COVID and stuff, it was quite hard to actually get an appointment. And I kind of wanted to leave it as long as possible to not, you know, COVID. Hmm. So I went in, and my doctor's really good, and he's I've he's known my family for a long time and looks after both my mum and I. So I went in to talk to him about my mum's fibromyalgia and that sort of stuff, and like, and I'm like, you know, what does that mean for me and stuff like that. He's like, well, it, it could it could mean that because of your a lot of your symptoms do line up, it might be something you have. Unfortunately, there's no way to test for five myalgia. It's just it's still such an unknown thing. Basically, what they know about it is people that have it are sort of more susceptible to pain, so they they feel generally feel pain more or more often, um, and things like that. Like they can, it's, it's still one of those things where it's like, oh, we can only sort of judge oh you've got all the symptoms you probably have this you know we'll try to treat that if it works cool if it doesn't you fucking know yeah so that was yeah, uh that would, that would that do was, my head in. and the other thing i wanted to ask about was my tooth um because i was afraid of getting dry socket and what's the last thing i said to you literally when i, when I dropped Aaron, you home as i was leaving yeah, the house no that's because of that, that that's why you're thinking about well i've got dry socket because like the last thing aaron said as he was huffing paint in my front yard, was <laughs> I have to be careful because I don't want to get dry socket. And I'd never heard of dry socket before, so I was like, "What's well, dry socket?" It's, oh, it's a thing where the bit in your mouth dries up. And I'm like, "That sounds like it." Like you know, to me, a gooey wound is a bad thing. Mm. So like the idea of a wound drying up, like that's ah, oh, that's good. It's healing, except apparently for when it's like in your mouth and there's a tooth hole, and like. Yeah, you just literally, I have to be careful to not get dry socket. And then like, what, like <laughs> seven hours later, you're just like, <laughs> I've got dry socket. That <laughs> fucking killed me. So yeah, dry <laughs> socket is what happens when you lose the blood clot 
in the wound. Blood clot doesn't seal properly and it basically dries out and you've just got active nerve and bone basically sitting there unprotected against anything. Mm. Now, I had a friend say his wife had it and it was worse than childbirth, like the pain. Um, That's pretty worse. Me knowing, like having pain all my life, I don't, a lot of pains I just deal with and don't really notice. You know, I've been feeling off, had an off feeling in my jaw and stuff like that. Mm. And my doctor's like, just takes one look at my mouth with scope and goes, you've got dry socket. That's infected. We need to get you on antibiotics. How are you even like walking around? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm just, I just keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm used to pain. He's like, well, that makes sense. Like, so my body just over the years has turned strong immunity to pain on a lot of levels because oh yeah, no, like what, this, what else I, can I fucking do? I remember so it, I was really from, sick, dude. Yeah. No, I know. Like you were, cause that's, you were going on about it like for a while. I also had like an infection. So I was lightheaded. Like I didn't realize that I felt so bad. Like after two days on the antibiotics and it started immediately clearing up, like I felt like I didn't have an elephant sitting on my neck anymore, you know, and I didn't feel <laughs> fevery. It was fucking bad. So I've been, no wonder I've been extra grumpy and fucking tired and all this shit because I've been really ill and I didn't know. <laughs> it's great. Uh uh, we funny. also talked about medical, I asked about medical trials for THC and stuff like that, and he's happy for me to sort of check that out. Just got to go see my pain specialist and do a few other tests and things first and get as much documentation together as we can. Um, same with the disability stuff is to get a disability license. I've so just got to get all that together. The more people I see, basically the easier it is for them. Yeah. Because then they just got, yeah. oh, there's so many people here. They've gone, this is it, this is it, this is it. Yeah. It's not like me getting meth, which they just give you. (laughs) With like zero real effort whatsoever. No, that's, you know, I I, I had to go see like an actual lady. I couldn't just go to the park. Yeah. Um, But yeah. (laughs) Yeah, they're going to give you the, like, does that, because it's meant to be good for pain. But see, the thing is, like, I'm part of a staggering minority of people who are interested in medicinal marijuana for pain relief of humans who want the pain relief but don't really want to get high. Mm. Like, I don't want to just, like, honk a pile of fucking weed. You know, like, I don't... I do not want to be high anymore. Um, So, like, the idea of, like, you know, some kind of capsule or something that has, like, the useful bit in it without the other, you know, useful bit in it would just be peachy to me. Yeah, and that's pretty much what it is. The um, let me bring up the thing I had. I had a the page I found it is Med Relief Cannabis Clinic. Okay, the main compounds derived from the cannabis plant are called THC and CBD. Products are made available through Med Relief Australia, a company renowned in Canada, and is by far the most highly prescribed range in the country. Many doctors are prescribing this range of products already in Australia because they are whole plant extracts and as such contain the full range of compounds such as terpenes and flavonoids. Really? Flavonoids? That's a word? Holy shit. As well as the main active ingredient, THC and CBD. They're formulated as oils, capsules, or dried flour. So does that mean they're going to get you high? THC is what causes the high feeling. Uh-huh. It has also been found to reduce nausea, part. vomiting, pain, muscle spasms, improve sleep and appetite. CBD has been found to reduce the high caused by THC. It may also be effective for seizures, pain, and to reduce anxiety. Uh-huh. Terpenes are also present in the plant and together with cannabinoids form what's termed the entourage effect. Together, <laughs> THC, CBD, and terpenes may benefit a range of conditions. So right. there, there's a few different ways. So obviously, any if you're getting flowers, you're likely to have a bit of the TA, more THC in it, and that's going to get you a little wacky. The pills uh-huh. are going to be mainly targeting just the sort of pain without that high feeling. Same with the oils, and yeah, it just depends how your body takes it, I guess, and the differs between which ones for you and stuff like that. So mm. pretty interesting. I'm glad that it's actually going ahead. Like that's, it's actually crazy because we just, we were driving one day um, 
And yeah, we, we saw it. We know it was like, hey, apply for medicinal marijuana today. And I was like, oh, there you go. Because like, I was looking at the list on the fucking website on the phone while you were driving. And it was just like, you know, have, do you have a long history of chronic pain? And I was like, oh, this is good. Because you've got like that traceable path of you've yeah. been complaining about this actively and trying all the different fucking things for years. Because like, you know, you can't just wander in and go, oh, settle me balls. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's a mess. Get, yeah, get on the weed. Get him to give you some fucking, some fucking weed. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I like the idea of it as an actual sort of solution to some of my fucking, like, you know, because my back will flare up every now and again. Like the the fucking exercises and whatnot help, but like, you know, it'd be nice for there to be like, because you know, you take the fucking Panadol and shit, and I swear to God, that stuff just doesn't do shit. Like, I am actually now just immediately genuinely curious as to how much we understand about how paracetamol works on pain mm. relief because like i just you know like does it do anything like it just someone said it was like oh yeah it stops pain and then just you know placebo effect people take the pill they feel a little you know more relaxed maybe that helps like ease off some of the you know tension when i was um when i had sort of after the tooth pulled the after effects and feeling the pain in the jaw taking panadol nurofen together was a marginal difference. Like hmm. it, it's reduced the swelling slightly in my jaw from the nurofen. Um, the nurofen helps with inflammation, things like that. Hmm. And the I don't know how much the penadol did or what did it, but it usually can help with fevers and low grade things like that that are sort of starting to spike. So it must have something good in it. But I, I do mean, think it like, is probably again, like it's a. I'm assuming there's something because yeah. I feel like it. You know it. It came out like after. Or around the time of like just like heroin for babies, mm. so I'm assuming that I'm assuming that it stuck around because people actually like did a bit of research and were like, "Ah, oh, yeah, this is you know, this actually sort of causes a reduction in inflammation, which is usually kind of like where a lot of pain will come from." It's like, ah, okay, that sounds nice. It's just I, I don't want to, you know, my brain goes, "Well, it's not working," so I take a bunch, and then my brain goes, "No, nah, if you take a bunch, you might die or some shit." Mm. Because they say don't take more than eight. And it's just like, well, I, like, I don't want to wind up, you know, having to explain to the fucking hospital that I wasn't trying to kill myself. <laughs> they, won't, they won't believe me, and then I'll have to talk to lots of people. And my now mature no interest in talking about my, like, feelings will read to them as an inability to talk about my feelings. Mm. And that will get fucking annoying fast. I'll just put you in a padded cell. Yeah, and then I'll get mad, and then they'll put me in a padded cell, (laughs) and then, you know, I won't. They won't let me out, and I'll be more upset. And then I get some rat ass medication that messes with your brain, though. And while I'm in there, you know, I'll just you know, fucking, you know, went in Rome, so I'll start like sticking my dick in one of the creases of the cell pads, (laughs) and then you know, they'll just be like, "Well, look, you know, we can't let him out now. He's just fucking stray things." You know, he's fucking Can't have him lump. just like, fucking in the yeah. streets. He's an inanimate, like, he's an inanimate lump humper. That's, we, you know, just, we, those, you know, we can't let those out. Do you know how many of those we have to fucking collect a week? Yeah. You know? Yeah, the Dude. numbers would, the numbers would shock you. And so, like, in Australia, we don't, like, common trope in the US and stuff is, like, dog catchers. We don't have those here. We have hump catchers. <laughs> they go around catching the humpers. Now, I was yeah. taken away at the tender age of uh, seventeen when I humped a giant Pikachu. <laughs> that was like they, that was actually fucking a good story, though. They were right to get you. I yeah, because you know, like this was back when I think I can't remember if it was Game Boy Advance era or if it was DS had started, but Nintendo had, was throwing these small get-togethers in shopping centers for uh, like Pokemon games and stuff like that, and they had it some person in one of those stupid giant Pikachu costumes, but it was one of those ones that. It's not sort of full body, so, you know, their legs just stick out at the bottom. <laughs> so they, they can't see shit because it's huge and giant. So they have a carer leading them around. Yeah. The carer got distracted. So I obviously ran up behind the Pikachu and started humping it and because he couldn't. He didn't know what was going on. You wouldn't, and, would you? Like, that's no. like, if you were in one of those big things, like, you're just not... You know, all sorts of things could be fucking you. You're just you getting know. jostled, and you're like, "What? Excuse yeah. me, what's happening?" And then you and like, then you hear, <laughs> and you're like, "Oh shit!" Jostling is like the name of the game when you're in one of those mascots. <laughs> you know, 
you never knock it. You just everything jostles you. You can't navigate through a space properly. Like, mm. yeah, and that's why they have to have to get you one of those carers. Like, fuck nets. that, dude. I'm kind of curious as to where you could get a big net like that these days. I mean, probably big nowhere, net. but I want one. Yeah, you know the big like fucking crazy person catching nets that they yeah. like. It's like it's like a butterfly net, but you know you could conceivably mm. hold an irritable meth head in one. <laughs> I think Which, you'd have to get them from maybe an army surplus store i'm thinking that's a good guess actually yeah i mean i haven't seen any in surplus stores or a hunting store perhaps like a (laughs) (laughs) it's like it's something that that you'd throw over animals i mean we wouldn't use it for the people it is hunting i mean yeah yeah. hunting the most dangerous game of all clive palmer there he is in Hungry Jacks. That wasn't very dangerous. Shut no, up. It's not dangerous or hard. He's like that pig on the internet that ate too much of the fermented apples and then rolled down the hill. <laughs> that Look is that pretty much Clive Palmer in a nutshell, yeah, yes. It, it, it's laying on its back and it's kind of snorting a little and it's like, you know, there's a farmer talking to it with like this real thick southern accent going, why do you go get into like the apples? And then it tries to roll over and it just fucking, it just goes down this fucking hill. And as someone who once woke up in a bush, I really understand that. Hmm. That's a... Like, what kind of bush are we talking? Um, like a fucking... Like a, like a shrub that you could, like, fucking... Um... Like a Moses bush? Like burning bush kind? No, no. Like, you know, like when they do topiary and they, like, carve the bush into shit and the bush oh, needs yeah. to have a certain kind of, like, bulk to it. That. Like it's, it's a, it's a, it was a bush. Like mm. I, you know, it was a bush bush. I, it wasn't like the bush as in the Australian, you know, sort of scrub. It was a bush that <laughs> I, I found myself in. Um, you know, and I was like, uh, yeah, I think I had things crawling on me. Yeah. Uh. Well, I was uh, in a bush, Aaron. It's my yeah, fault. Yeah, I, I, like, I, I guess you were in the bush's home. <laughs> uh, I was in the bush. <laughs> that's like a home to many creatures. So yeah, um, getting back on track. I'm hoping nothing else happens. Touch wood. Like seriously, I hope that's the last it's, thing that's happened because no, it's been it's, full on. Like, <laughs> it, yeah, it's. It, I was thinking about it the other day, and you're kind of like. Uh, hair star from the fucking preacher comics and just like over the course of the comics like things really bad things are happening to him because he's a villain so you know it's fun bad things are happening to him and he's just losing bits and getting maimed like you know he loses his his eye and then he gets like a fucking you know urethra cut in his head and then like just you know he gets his dick bit off he loses a leg like this is all these like slowly he's just getting chipped away physically Mm. and psychologically over the course of this fucking thing and that's kind of where i'm at like just with you like now you know initially i was sort of like concerned but like after long enough the concerned energy just runs out like you're just like i what am i you know you're still alive so there's that and now i'm just now now we're into curious you know now i just want to know where it's gonna go because i feel like by the end of it you're gonna just look like grug do you remember the grug books dude i actually have some grug books my mom bought no no my mom bought me some like a few months ago like last time (laughs) like she's like i was in the shopping (laughs) center i was in the news uh, news agents and i found grug do you remember grug and i was i turned to her and i looked a dead fucking cold in the eye and i said mom not a day goes by i don't think of grug (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> like seriously i used to love grog dude little fucking bush man he was a, he was a bush like one of those trees one of the black boy trees well they're not called that grass trees they're called now um and he fell off and he turned into a little person that's the story of grog <laughs> pretty much dude like uh, god is that where he came from yes that was the origin of grog huh yeah, he was he was one of the little bushes, and he fell off and turned into a little person. Because I knew it was some kind of like nature sprite of some description, but like, you know. And then he makes a hole and puts a rock in front of it for a door. And I think he makes a mailbox too. What, what was the odd creature? Yeah, I'm looking Grug up. 
Fuck, there was an animation. Oh, holy shit, there was too. Oh, there was a stop motion, so there's just weird footage of people just fondling Grog. Huh. I wonder if... Yeah, yeah, you're right. He he was the top of the Borrowang tree. I am I am very well versed in the lore of Grug. Dude, there have been Grug plays. I know, dude. It's quite impressive. And with that, that's probably going to be your weekly update, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm about to poop myself. Got anything you'd like to um, add yeah, before we I'd leave? Like to- I'd like to read 45 minutes of, <laughs> um, no, uh, I might do like a little extra bonus stream cause I want to do alien vs predator and just go into long detailed points about like why it's really good. Cause cool. I don't think enough people really pay attention to alien vs predator, which is weird to me because it is still hands down the best brawler out of the 90s. Like, it does, mm. nothing fucking touches it for a lot of important reasons. And I feel like if we're going to start getting brawlers coming back now, which I'd like, you know, I, I, I'd love, um, you know, as much as people need to be looking at things like Final Fight and, um, you know, Streets of Rage and whatnot, like, you, you should be fucking looking at goddamn, you know, Alien vs. Predator, because it was... Like, there were a lot of fucking brawlers that would just walk and punch and take your fucking money. Mm. For a game that was still an arcade game and based around the concept of take your fucking money, they went above and beyond. Oh, for sure, and, dude. Like, I... You know, I'm, I, I found myself just, like, fucking thinking about it while I was on the toilet, and I was just like, I'm just gonna wind up speaking these sentences to an empty room anyway. Yeah. Like, fuck it. May as well have an empty room plus three... Yeah. People on the internet. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be, that'll be rad. That'll be cool. Yeah, three attentive losers who you know will hear it and then accomplish nothing with the information. But you're not ready for this. We're no. fucking not ready for this. I'm gonna leave this as the image for the ending. Um, I'm gonna just zoom in that before I show that to pop up. I'm gonna send you a link. Oh, holy balls! This is a. Uh, I went searching for Grug, and I'm not disappointed. Did you that. look up Grug Rule 34? No, I did not. I'm going to, though. Yeah, I was going to. Because it's an Australian thing, so I, it'll be nice to see, like, oh, holy shit. Well, there's a category. Oh, my God. I think it's, I don't think that's the I right know, Grug, though. Is, yeah. That's I not mean, the right Grug. Yeah, it's, it's the it's the grug from. Oh, I think he's from the, yeah the crudes. Yeah. God damn it! How All dare right, there my, be two uh, grugs? That's upsetting. Just, just Nicolas Cage hugging this big caveman. Like, I don't know what it is about it, but just the look in the caveman's eyes, look in Nick's eyes, something's going on there. I, I don't like it. It's not okay, you know. There were two Ghostbusters two games made for the NES. One was made by Acclaim, or oh no, Activision. The other was made by Hal. I want you to guess which one is unplayably bad. Look, I would... <sighs> Sense says that the Acclaim one would be the trash one. But it is. Well, it's, it, it, it is? It's Activision. Yeah, oh, it's, it's like night and day. It's fucking demented, because like Ghostbusters 2, the Activision version, was released in the United States. In Europe and Japan, Hal just released its own Ghostbusters 2 game <laughs> called New Ghostbusters 2. And... <laughs> New Ghostbusters 2 is fucking great. I was playing it just before. It's still an enjoyable game. And then you play Ghostbusters 2 that America got, and you're like, what did they do to deserve this? A lot of things. A lot of things. That's what you get for slavery. You you get Ghostbusters 2 by Activision. (laughs) You, like, look them up on YouTube, and you'll see what I mean. Like, when you see them playing, you'll be like, oh, like, it's visible from space. The mm. quality difference between these two fucking Ugh. Uh, You have been updated, folks. See you yeah. soon. Bye. Classy is proudly sponsored completely by its fans. We thank you for your support. It expanded somehow. Oh.
have you know 